and this frother is actually on Amazon you could get it on Amazon and I'm going to leave a link down in the description box if you guys want to get one I have been needing a frother for so long so I'm so happy that I finally have one but I'm just going to mix it so this is the this is the frother again i'm going to leave a link link to it down below if you guys want to get it now i'm just going to put it in <gasps> okay this was not the smartest idea i need a bigger cup Hold okay this is a lot smarter so i'm just gonna there. and then i'm gonna put more ice Okay, so let's see what this tastes like. I'm really like so out of frame, but let's see how this tastes. Oh my gosh, wait. It would taste good with some cinnamon. And I'm also gonna put a little bit more brown sugar, but it tastes so, so good. Okay, so now I'm just gonna just jump into the video the way I planned. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be about finances and I'm honestly so excited for this video because this is something that I have been dealing with for a while. So this is going to be the perfect video for you guys if you deal with, um, you know, just any type of struggle with your finances. And I really hope that this video and the principles that I share throughout this video really help you guys to receive your financial breakthroughs and your miracles that God has truly intended for you to have. Especially as children of God, we do not have to be subjected to any type of, you know, demonic oppression. Like that is not our portion and God has given us the authority and power over all of our enemies so we do not have to allow ourselves to be like stuck in a place for years and years that God never truly intended it for us to be in so it is today is going to be the day that we take a stand and we take full authority over our finances we possess our possessions and you know we just flourish the way God has intended for us to flourish and you know I also want to mention that I know that there is a time and a season for everything you know like maybe God will have you in a period where you know he's like not really allowing you to have as much finances because he's trying to discipline you or he's trying to take you through a season that's going to help you with your testimony later on in the future but if it's some if you're in a position where you're struggling with your finances for years and years months and months then it just shows that there is demonic oppression going on that you need to deal with. so right now i'm just going to go into prayer so father in the name of jesus christ of nazareth we come before you today humbly and we ask that you protect all of us as we are here coming before you and i just plead the blood of jesus christ over everybody that is watching this video including myself i decree and declare that my home is covered in the blood of jesus christ Father, I also put on the full armor of God, of God to guard my life against demonic attacks. I put on the belt of truth to protect myself against the lies and deception of Satan. We put on the breastplate of righteousness to protect our hearts from the temptations that we battle. We put on the gospel of peace on our feet so that we are ready to take your light wherever you send us this day. We choose to walk in peace and freedom of your spirit and not be overcome with the spirit of fear and anxious thoughts. We take up the shield of faith that will extinguish all of the fiery darts and the threats that are hurled our way by the enemy. And we believe in your power, Lord, to protect us and to choose to trust in you. We put on the helmet of salvation, which covers our mind. It covers our thoughts. And it reminds us that we are children of the day, forgiven, set free, saved by grace of Jesus Christ. And we take up the sword of your spirit, your very word, the one offensive weapon given to us for battle, which has the power to demolish strongholds, alive, active, and sharper than any double-edged sword. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so I'm, what I'm going to do 
first is I'm going to start out with some powerful scriptures that you can use against these demonic attacks. Because remember, the, the word of God is like a sword in the spirit. And also, um, I'm going to share with you guys, like, there are these two websites that you can go to where you can pray these prayer points. And these are really powerful prayers. I have definitely seen results when using these websites to pray. I have it in my notes here, a few of the scriptures that I have written down in the past. But I also think this is also a perfect time if you guys haven't already to repent for all of your sins and repent for all known and unknown sins and I'm gonna do that right now. So every scripture that I mentioned, I'm gonna have it up on the screen so that you guys can reference it. And I'm also going to leave the links to these websites down below so that if you guys wanna follow along, you can. So the first scripture that you can use against the enemy when praying for your finances is Deuteronomy 28, 11 through 12. So it says, the Lord will grant you abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock and the crops of your ground in the land he swore to your ancestors to give you. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the works of your hands. You will lend to many nations but borrow from none. So what I like to do with scriptures like this, I say like Father, in your word, this is what it says. Father, in your word, in Deuteronomy 28, 11, it says that you will grant me abundant prosperity and that you will open the storehouse. You will open the heavens and the storehouse and send your rain on the land in seasons to bless your, the works of my hands. And you said that I will lend to many nations and borrow from none. So Lord, I pray that you remove the financial drought that has been placed in my life by demonic entities so that I can experience the true fruits and the la of the labor that you want me to experience in life in Jesus name. Proverbs 10 22 says the blessings of the Lord bring wealth without painful toil for it. So if you have a job and uh, and like when you you even like prayed and you fasted for that job and then all of a sudden on the job you notice that you're having issues and like or even if you have a business and god had like granted you the yes and said like this is a business for you to start and you see that your business isn't flourishing and prospering then you can say lord in proverbs 10:22 it says that the blessings of the Lord will bring wealth without painful toil for it. So Lord, why is it that I'm experiencing a drought? Why is it that I'm experiencing oppression in my finances, Lord? Because of what it says in your word, let's make it true. Send me the full blessing and remove the demonic oppression so that I do not have to painfully toil for the blessing that you have provided me with because I know that is not part of your will. And then in Psalm 145 it says, you open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The next one is 2 Corinthians 10 11. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. So the next scripture is Joel 2, 18 through 19. Then the Lord was jealous for his land and he took pity on his people. The Lord replied to them, I am sending you grain, new wine and olive oil, enough to satisfy you fully never again will i make you object of scorn to the nation okay so the next scripture is genesis 22:14. 14. so abraham called the place the lord will provide and and to this day it is said on the mountain of the lord it will be provided so if you guys know about that scripture with abraham i i definitely think that you guys should also read like the the, like the chap the chapters of the scriptures that I provide so that you could get the full context and really understand what these scriptures mean and how it really correlates to prosperity and wealth. So um, the Lord always says that he will provide so you know that you can stand firm on his word 
and you know that the Lord does not lie about what he does for his people so just bring this word to him and just bring your financial difficulties to him and let him know like look God this is what I'm really dealing with now I know this is not part of your will let's and also like send send his warring ask him to bring his warring angels in the heavenly realms to fight for you in areas that you cannot fight you know in the realm of the spirit where you cannot fight to so that you can possess your possessions and even obadiah 1 17 says that um when you receive deliverance you are able to possess your possessions the way he truly intends for you to possess them because one two God! You demo. Go. One, two. When our blessings are coming down from the heavenly realms, demonic entities try to hold up, steal, or delay the blessings that God has for us, and that is not the will of God. And also, if you have open doors of sin in your life, that's also going to be another um, avenue for the devil to use against you. So if you do have open doors of sin, you should really consider, you know, just switching your behavior around so that you don't have to be under demonic oppression. Because the devil always tries to find like a legal right to enter and, you know, steal what is yours. Also, if you have any like any any ancestral generational curses it's important to pray against those things too because the devil also uses the sins of our ancestors against us to hinder and block the destiny that god has for us so we have to pray against that as well so another scripture is philippians 4 19 and my god will meet all of your needs according to the riches of his glory in christ jesus so because of what it says in philippians 4 19 we know that the Lord will meet all of our needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. So that means that there is absolutely no limit on what he provides for us. So in our minds, we may let's say your rent is like $2,000 and you need that $2,000 for your rent and you ask God for that. That doesn't mean that he's going to give you $2,000. He could give you way more than that. Because you know, Jesus is abundant and he has many, many, many things to give us. And, you know, he is the king of kings. Like, he owns everything. He has more than enough. He has an overflow of blessings. So we do not have to just, like, in our minds, it's like we limit ourselves when we ask for certain things because that's kind of like how we function. But really, we could ask for, like, a, an overflow. We could ask for as, as much as we want to ask for without putting a limit on it because God has no limits so Genesis 39 21 says the Lord was with him he showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden so also like when you're facing financial difficulties and you're feeling stuck just know that God is going to favor you especially if you have been honoring him and you have been like praying you've been fasting and you've just been doing your best to show God like you or, or you even have been showing God like Lord I am willing to sacrifice so much to show you look look at how desperate I am this is an emergency I need you to intervene so another one of my this one is actually one of my favorite ones and I think that this is a really really great one to use this is Habakkuk 2 2 through 2 through 3 and it says and the Lord answered me and said write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it surely will come, it will not tarry. So this right here is just telling you, like, if you have, like, um, if there are things in your life that you are needing God to answer for you, literally write it out and bring it before God, bring it towards to your altar and be like, God, this, I am, releasing this i'm fully surrendering myself to you i'm releasing myself from this problem and i'm fully relying on you to to fully you know re bring a resolution to this problem for me because without your help i might not make it so write it down clear how much money do you need what do you need the money for what time do you need the money by and 
I have been doing that and he has been helping me with that and it has been so crazy it has like even down to the the day of that I've been needing the money he, he has provided it so I know that this is definitely really really accurate and you have to have faith behind it you can't just say you know what God if if you do it that's great but if you don't do it then I understand that as well when we come to God with our prayers and our requests we also have to have that expectation and that knowing that he is going to do it because of what it says in his word don't is i don't think it's always wise to say like lord if it is in your will could you do this because in his word many times he says like if we ask it will be given to us you know so and you just have to think about it like this like he is our father he knows that we need things and God, he loves to provide for us. He loves to surprise us and, you know, shock us when he provides us with our blessing. So don't be scared to ask him and don't be scared to expect it from him because that's kind of the point. That's what he wants you to do. He wants you to ask and he wants you to fully believe and expect that he's going to provide you with whatever it is that you're asking for. So don't, don't limit him and say like, well, if it is your will, because of course it's his will for us to prosper financially. It's the devil. I really believe that, you know, like financial hindrance and poverty and everything is, is from the devil. That is demonic and that is not the will of the Father for us to be, you know, struggling to pay for anything. The devil wants to limit us in our finances so that we aren't able to do much because you know in life we need money for everything like literally everything we need money for so that of course the devil is going to want christians to be suppressed and oppressed and not have you know enough money because when we have money we also could help other people with things that they're needing as well so of course the devil wants us to just have like just enough for what we need so like if someone is needing something we can't even help them with it but that can change so I, I have a lot more scriptures i'm not too sure if i'm gonna share all of them um okay what well, i think what i'm gonna do is i'm going to i'm not gonna read all of them but i'm going to list out the scriptures and then you guys can write them down and you could look for them during your own time and you could read them so the next one is romans 8 28 the next one is malachi 3 10 the next one is Joel chapter 2, verses 24 to 25, Matthew 13, 8, Deuteronomy 28, 6, Deuteronomy 28, 2, 2 Corinthians 9, 8, Deuteronomy 8, 18, Deuteronomy 15, 6, and Proverbs 20, 22, 7. So before I show you guys the websites of the scripture, the, um, the prayer points, I also wanted to mention... Um, a foundational biblical principle that I definitely know can help as well with um, uh, financial burdens and financial struggles. So in Matthew 8, 18, 18, it's basically saying, whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And this was actually a scripture that I didn't really understand for a while. And I this, this scripture always played in my head and I never understood what that really meant and I feel like God was always bringing me to that scripture so that I could dive deeper into it and learn how to use that as a weapon to fight against demonic attacks but finally I got it and I really learned a lot about this um, when I was with the flood and free ministry preparing for my deliverance and um, I also have shared my testimony with my financial issues and stuff on on their channel on their YouTube channel so I'm gonna link their video down below in the description box if you guys want to learn more about you know all of that financial stuff that I had I was going through um, it was definitely a lot a lot a lot of demonic oppression against my my finances and you know the devil has been attacking my finances literally since I could start working as a teenager so um, it has always been like a struggle with my finances but thankfully now that I know the authority that I hold through Jesus, I know that, you know, I'm just going to keep flourishing. My my finances are just going to keep increasing. So, um, so to bind a spirit means to, like, to tie up a spirit. So when you say that, I, let's say you bind because everything 
has a spirit connected to it poverty that is a spirit so you could say father in the name of jesus christ of nazareth i bind the strong man spirit of poverty in the name of jesus christ and once you bind that spirit of poverty that spirit of poverty in your life is not just bound here on earth but it's also bound in heaven so that means that that spirit has no right to operate in your life anymore and recently what i've been like what i've been saying is i bind the spirit of poverty with the three strand cord that cannot be easily broken according to ecclesiastes 4 12 because the like if you look at the the reference for the scripture it says so ecclesiastes 4 12 says though one may be overpowered by another two can withstand him and a threefold cord is not quickly broken so you could even say like i bind them up with um chains 10 times bigger than the chains that they had tied me up with because that's also something that goes on in the realm of the spirit like and all of this stuff could be revealed to you in your dreams and you probably don't even realize that that's god showing you what's going on in the realm of the spirit so um like they in the realm of the spirit these demons they could have your finances chained up in boxes they could have them in cages they could have your possessions in like rooms they could bury your possessions in the realm of the spirit it's just so much stuff that they can do so that they can block you know the blessings that god has for you but it's it's really up to us to really take authority and take a stand over all of that so that we aren't just like allowing the devil and these demons to fully control our life because we we don't have time for that like life is already hard enough like we need to take a stand and take authority over these demons that are trying to keep us bound and oppressed and stuck in depression and stuff so after you say like i bind the spirit i bind the spirit of poverty with a three strand cord that cannot be easily broken according to your word in ecclesiastes 4 12 you can say and father i now loose the spirit of abundance in the name of jesus i now loose the spirit of blessings in the name of jesus i loose the spirit of wealth in the name of jesus you could just use all of these um you know these things that god has truly intended for us i actually had wrote down a, a long list of things as well like i lose the spirit of angelic assistance i lose the spirit of double acceleration i lose the spirit of supernatural advancement i lose the spirit of financial stability i lose the spirit of joy i lose the spirit of bliss i lose the spirit of comfort just things that you know god truly has for us so um uh another example is you could say like i bind the spirit of financial ruin you could say i i bind the spirit of financial ruin and also like it was so you could you like it was also revealed to me through the flood and free ministry that i that there was this demonic group so called the nestor system of entrapment that the devil had used against me and that was basically a demonic system that was built in my life so that i could be trapped in my finances and never see growth or anything so i think that you guys should definitely like partner with the holy spirit and ask him like what 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 is the what what is the devil using against me what are the tools that the devil is using against me what is it that i need to be praying against what is the devil using to hinder and block my finances you could also say i bind the spirit of debt in the name of jesus and i lose the spirit of wealth i lose the, the blood of jesus christ over my finances you know you could say all of those things like whatever your issues are with your finances you can use that to say i buy I, I hope this is this is making sense also like if you notice that you're struggling to receive a job a job offer like you're applying for so many jobs and over and over you're just re receiving rejections you could say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind the spirit of rejection and I lose the spirit of acceptance. I lose the spirit of congratulations. I bind the strong man spirit of stagnation. I bind the strong man spirit of setback. I bind the strong man spirit of hindrance. So um, those are definitely going to be things that could help you to release your finances 
you could also just ask God, like, Lord, send your warring angels in the kingdom of heaven to release to me the possessions that my enemies have stolen from you. I send fire to every single demon spirit that is hindering, blocking my finances. I send fire to every chain. I send fire to, you know, just send the fire of God to everything so that he could destroy the works of darkness that are, that is operating in your life. Um, so that you could receive your breakthroughs and your miracles that God truly has intended for you. And I think it's also important for us to be able to recognize a lot of these things so that we aren't just ignorant to Satan's devices, so that we can learn to fight against these demonic spirits that, you know, they love, they love to see, they love to see humans mad, they love to see us angry, they love to see us depressed and sad, crying. You know that's really their job so satan probably like they, they literally have meetings about you you know like it is really that serious like they they have specific meetings about you so that they could track your progress you know there's monitoring spirits making sure like if you have an interview or if you have something coming up they block it if they see that you are receiving a blessing they block it for example, I remember I had this interview on the phone. It went really, really good. It was with the company that I really, really was excited to work for. They were paying really good and I was just so excited. And they told me they were gonna call me back the next day. And they never called me back. And I know that it was, I never told anybody about the job either. I didn't tell anybody about the interview or how anything happened because I was just so used to receiving disappointments and setbacks and I thought like if I tell somebody maybe they're gonna like be jealous behind the scenes and try to like speak bad against it so I was just like I'm not gonna tell anybody about this and the next day came no phone call or anything so a lot of these things could be um, monitoring spirits and familiar spirits that come along with the spirit of witchcraft to um, hinder and just block your blessings from you so now I'm just gonna go to the websites so the first website so the first website I want to share with you guys is I blog gospel and the title of this is prayers against financial attacks and I'm just gonna read the first few so that you guys can see um, what it what it's like so it says Thank you, Father, for the financial breakthrough and provision you have made available to me. Thank you, Lord, for I know that it is your will that I prosper financially. Father, from your word, Father, from your word, that you are rich and I am not supposed to be poor. Therefore, let every attack of darkness against my finances be shattered in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let the fire of God locate every hand of darkness that is withholding my finances. Let them release my finances now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I frustrate and I abort the assignment of every of every agent of darkness assigned against my finances in the mighty name of Jesus. By the authority of Jesus Christ, I seize back my finances which the enemy has stolen from me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I destroy every dream attack of darkness against my finances in the mighty name of Jesus. And the next website, this website has um, 38 prayer points. This one is definitely a lot longer. But this one is Warfare Prayers for Financial Breakthrough. And this one, it says, I come against every satanic power, demonic spirits, principalities, powers, rulers of the evil world, all wicked spirits in high places, unfamiliar spirits, spirits of poverty, and the rest alike. Every spirit above and below them, in fact, every spirit that is not of God, that has risen to stop me from having financial success, and I begin to release myself from their evil grip right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. I stand upon the authority of the heavenly trinity, and I command every satanic grip on my finances to be loosed right now in Jesus' name. Every unfamiliar spirit and anyone that is not of God that is holding my finances, my income, and my possessions, I decree that this, this day you let go of what belongs to me in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, every plan and device of my foes to divert my wealth and possessions through sickness, sudden death, accidents, financial emergencies, or any other means, I destroy them right now by fire in the name of Jesus. So that's just a few of the prayers, and these are really 
really good prayers and if you guys want to find more prayers like this all you have to do is put in like prayers against um prayers against financial attacks that's how i found a lot of these prayers so this definitely is something that you guys can use and also and also pray against this the spirit of witchcraft and the spirit of jezebel and the spirit of python the spirit of python is definitely a spirit that also just sucks up all that you have like let's say you you can make like let's say you make like six thousand dollars a month but somehow it's like your finances are just running through your hands like water and it's like every time you receive extra money that money has to go towards something else that that definitely shows that there is demonic spirits hindering or you know messing with your finances so definitely pray about it and you will definitely see results even to make this more powerful reading and doing these prayers you should pray i would say at midnight between 12 or even just like between 12 and 6 a.m because those those are the times that the the demonic realm is like most active so i think praying at that time you definitely would see a lot a lot of things move because even like when you read the bible and stuff a lot of the finance not the financial miracles but a lot of the miracles that occurred happened during the early morning hours when they prayed so i definitely think that praying during the early morning hours is going to show you know great results in your prayer and you could also couple that in with fasting so you could hear from the holy spirit a lot more so that you could also show the holy spirit like this is an emergency i am needing you to come through for me so um that's basically everything that I wanted to share in this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed and that you learned something from it. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.